Hey everyone, welcome back to the Thinking Crypto channel, your home for cryptocurrency news and interviews. Guys, this is one of the most biggest and bullish news items uh, in a video I've ever covered. And I want you to watch the video to the end. I'm not saying that because I want views and so forth. This is all important news. And I'm going to talk about the Ukraine legalizing crypto today. And now on the same day, we had news that President Biden's executive order around crypto is coming next week, and that the FBI is forming a digital currency unit. <laughs> Something is happening here. Along those lines, we have big news out of Spain and United Arab Emirates. So the dominoes are falling very quickly here. Something is coming. I think we're going to see a huge uh, tipping point for government regulations around crypto very soon, um, because we're just seeing moves um, happening on a massive scale around the globe. We also have huge investment news, Sequoia Capital. They're going to have a 500 to $600 million fund to invest in crypto tokens, not the companies, the tokens. So this is, this is important. And then we're also going to talk about Ripple uh, and the SEC and the lawsuit. There's a huge update coming, my friends. Tomorrow might be a very big day for the SEC Ripple lawsuit. And it's good news for Ripple and bad news for Gary Genser and the SEC. And I want to talk about him and a, a new report around him. So we're going to break it all down. Uh, lots to get through. Before we get to it, please go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment below and hit the subscribe button if you're new here. It helps support the channel and it doesn't cost you anything. If you're listening on a podcast site, please give me a five-star rating. A quick word from our sponsors versus Algorand, which is building the future of uh, finance. Algorand is one of the leading crypto projects in the, in the industry. They're getting significant adoption and investments. Uh, there's a lot of tokenization happening on Algorand, like CBDCs and NFTs and much more. Second sponsor is uh, Taxbit, which is the leading tax service provider in the crypto industry. It is a service I personally use and can vouch for. Uh, it saves me so much time and, and so much uh, uh, work in trying to calculate my crypto gains and losses. I can easily print out the forms Taxbit provides and I give it to my accountant. So easy. So I highly recommend the service. If you'd like to learn more about Algorand and Taxbit, li links will be in the description. Now, if we look at the market here, it is a sea of red. We are, we are having a pullback. And it is be, this is because of the negative news we've been hearing about, but also Bitcoin's respective cycles. It's funny how sometimes the news aligns with how the charts move and what's you know supposedly going to come from a technical analysis standpoint. So Bitcoin right now is under 41000 at $40,873. Nothing to panic or worry about, nothing uh, significant. Now, oddly enough, or funny enough, you know, I, I drew yesterday the following line structure showing that Bitcoin could pull back and then move up in its retracement. Seems like that's what's playing out. I had given two scenarios, if you guys remember, that the green candles we saw with the breakouts, that that continues and that's our retracement move, but not yet. We, we have to pull back, test some uh, price levels here, then move back up. And it looks very similar to what happened in the summertime. See, like, the, the, you know, we had the green candles and our pullback. So it's all market cycles, my friends. And here I want to share something from Blockchain Backer, who does some great uh, technical analysis. And his respective chart that he's been sharing for months, going back to last year, um, using a fractal from uh, the previous bull market, shows Bitcoin is on track with regards to a pullback at this respective time. And as you can see, it's been fairly accurate here, guys. Um, not everything is going to line up perfectly, but man, look at how <laughs> this is pretty accurate, as, as close as accurate as you can get. So essentially, Bitcoin's going to drop down, uh, certainly, well, according to this model, below $40,000, test some uh, test some support levels, then move up to the 58K uh, retracement peak and then pull back into a bear market, at which point um, I will be expecting an alt season, a very big alt season. Obviously, none of this is guaranteed, but as you can see, uh, based on the data and the facts we have today, things are playing out according to this. But you know, it, that doesn't mean that next week it's going to absolutely do this. It could do something different. We just have to wait and see. Markets don't move by our feelings and emotions and our wants, right? So we, we have to uh, form our thesis based on the facts. And then if we have to make adjustments, we make adjustments, but things are looking very accurate here. And by the way, I'll be interviewing blockchain backer next week. So you don't want to miss that guys. 
Uh, make sure you got that notification bell enabled. Now, I want to talk to you about Ukraine, Russia, the United States, and crypto regulations. Something big is happening here. Many of you know, and it's just it's been all over the mainstream media, that Russia is threatening to invade Ukraine. And this has been a back and forth and all kinds of nonsense and this and that. But look at this headline. Ukraine legalizes Bitcoin. The country's parliament backed in fin final reading uh, an updated bill to legalize Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin is now legal in Ukraine as its parliament approved in final reading a bill that caters to the president's recommendations. However, the country has not made Bitcoin a legal tender. Now, the first hurdle is usually legalizing it. Making a legal tender, is that's a whole nother ball game. But the, the important part is legalizing cryptocurrencies. Uh, here's a quote. The new law is an additional opportunity for business development in our country. Foreign and Ukrainian crypto companies will be able to operate legally, and Ukrainians will have convenient and secure access to the global market for virtual assets. Mikhailov Fedorov, Ukrainian Minister of Digital Transformation, said in a statement. Wow, guys. Now, I want you to think about something. There, there's supposedly another country looking to invade your country. <laughs> And your parliament is passing crypto regulations and, and uh, green lighting crypto. Oh, man, something is happening here, my friends. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if this whole uh, Russia invading U Ukraine is some, uh, you know, smokescreen or something. But that's just my theory. You know, I'm not trying to make light of potential harm that may come to people and whatever it may be. But something just uh, something doesn't seem right. And it's just my gut. So the parliament passed the new law of Ukraine on virtual, excuse me, on virtual and virtual assets on Thursday with more than 270 votes. According to an official statement, the bill details requirements that Bitcoin service providers such as exchanges should abide by and determine fines for violations of laws provisions. In addition to determining that the country's National Securities Commission regulate the cryptocurrency market. Wow, guys. Now. That's a big time news. And remember the context. Supposedly another country is about to invade your country and you're passing crypto regulations. We get word from Jennifer Schlongberger, uh, who is a cryptocurrency reporter for Yahoo, former Fox Business. She tweeted out today, President Biden will issue a wide ranging executive order on regulating crypto next week. Among the deets, the order will commission a study of a CBDC and asked Treasury along with other agencies to come up with a report on the future of money and payments systems. More coming. Same day. Now, also on the same day, U.S. DOG, DOJ excuse me, names Crypto Enforcement Director, reveals new FBI group focus on blockchain analysis and asset seizure. Uh, a crypto-focused enforcement team founded last October by the U.S. Department of Justice has a new director. According to Thursday's announcement, Yun Yong Chao is now leading the National Cryptocurrency Enforcement Team. Previously, Chao uh, or Cho, Choi, uh, I apologize if I'm butchering the name, served as a senior counsel to Deputy Attorney General Lisa Monaco, who has served as a public-facing official for the DOJ's crypto efforts. So as you can see, big moves happening among different governments. Now, I tweeted about it today. Let's put all the puzzle pieces together. Russia has been supposedly threatening to invade Ukraine. And then in January into early February, we saw Putin all of a sudden do a quick 180 on the central bank's proposed ban of crypto, right? The Russia central bank came out and said, we want to ban crypto. Putin comes out directly and says, no banning crypto. We're going to regulate it. Central bank and the finance minister work together and get the regulations going. He also said Russia had a huge advantage when it came to Bitcoin mining. Now, we have that item. Then all of a sudden, Ukraine, which is under the looming threat of invasion, legalizes crypto. Then we got the report that the president of the United States is going to be putting out the executive order. Now, we know we knew about the, the executive order since like January. So that's been in the works. Now, all of a sudden, we hear next week it's coming. Now, we don't know for a fact that it's coming next week, but the timing 
right? Of all this, something big is cooking up here, guys. I don't know what it is, but it could be we're on the cusp of mass government uh, regulation of crypto, positive regulation, not, not banning, um, and legalizing crypto. I think big bullish times are ahead. Now, if we look at the chart from blockchain backer here, we have our pullback here. So maybe we get the news come early March and that's when the pump happens and Bitcoin goes into its retracement in an alt season. Sometimes the news aligns with the charts and it's very interesting how that happens, right? So I, I hope you guys see what's happening here. And I, I don't know if you agree with me, but it seems like something big is on the horizon especially this Ukraine news. This, this, just think about it. If, if somebody is at your borders threatening to invade you and you're, you're legalizing crypto <laughs> in your parliament, oh man, something's going on here, guys. Now, um, Anthony Scaramucci, who I've interviewed a couple of times on the channel, he tweeted out today, just leaving DC, Washington, DC. And then he put, we are going to make it, the W-A-G-M-I. Does he know something we don't know? I know a lot of folks have been lobbying and trying to get politicians to move in the right direction. So uh, he seems excited here. And uh, I'm going to try to you know, get some information from him. Now, we see more and more members of Congress are putting out bills and, and fighting for crypto regulations now. So Brian Steele, who uh, is proudly serving the people of Wisconsin's first congressional district, he tweeted out today, I'm a co-sponsor of the Keep Innovation in America Act to remove unnecessary burdens on digital asset owners and brokers. We need to keep innovating in America. Hashtag crypto, and he tagged Patrick McHenry, which we know has been fighting for crypto regulations. We're just seeing a lot of politicians now, guys, just getting involved, talking about it, putting out bills, co-sponsoring bills. This is all bullish news, my friends. Uh, I hope you're following me here. And then we have U.S. Senator Cynthia Lummis, who I've interviewed on the channel. Um, she's a big Bitcoin proponent, holds Bitcoin. She said the Fed should hold Bitcoin on its balance sheet. <laughs> Guys, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that comes soon or, you know, well, I shouldn't say soon, but if that's down the line, I, I don't think the Fed is going to jump right into this, but central banks around the globe could hold Bitcoin the same way they do gold. So uh, Bitcoin is definitely gold 2.0, a store of value. Now, with all that said, breaking, Spain's central bank approves the first crypto services provider in the country. Guys, something is cooking up here. It's good. It's good. Uh, but I hope you see what I'm seeing. I hope I'm not overthinking this. But when I see moves from the government like this, and it's all like in the same time frame, something is coming very soon. Now, look at this. The United Arab Emirates set to issue a nationwide crypto licensing and build a crypto mining ecosystem. Wow. This is being reported by Bloomberg. Companies, including Binance, are considering bigger presence. Official says the UAE wants to build a crypto mining ecosystem. So the United Arab Emirates is poised to issue federal licenses for virtual asset service providers by the end of the first quarter in an effort to attract more, uh, or excuse me, attract some of the world's biggest crypto co uh, companies, according to a government official. See what I'm saying here, guys? Why are all these dominoes all of a sudden falling so rapidly, including the United States, right? Further clarity, executive orders. Uh, this makes me so bullish, my friends. Now, this news is incredibly bullish. Sequoia Capital is raising up to 600 million in a new sub fund to focus on tokens. Founders have asked the firm to take a more active role in managing its tokens. This one will give it uh, that ability to engage further, it said. How many news items have I shared with you guys? If you've been a subscriber, a listener, and a watcher of the YouTube channel or on a podcast, how many news items have I shared over just the last six months of this fund, that fund? raising a billion, raising 500 million, 100 million, 200. I mean, I can't even keep up anymore, but this is all great news. Now, what have I always told you guys? Double dipping. And I wish I had the ability to double dip. Um, but maybe once I take profits at the peak of this bull run uh, on my alts, I will be able to double dip. What do I mean by that? In this respective asset class, you can hold the tokens and benefit from them. 
but you can also invest in the picks and the shovels, right? It's like the gold rush where uh, the people are looking to go mine gold. Well, you you develop the, the pickaxe and the shovels and the, the wheelbarrows, right? Well, you have the people building the infrastructure for crypto, the on and off ramps, the custody, storage, security, yada, yada. So you can invest in both and make money both ways. And these hedge funds, these investment firms know this. So they're building a fund specifically to buying tokens while they have invested in the companies, the infrastructure companies. So the 50-year-old company has $80 billion in assets under management. The firm's involvement in crypto started back in 2015. They've been here a long time, guys, when it began investing in the space through uh, both equity and tokens. Sequoia Capital is launching a new $500 million to $600 million sub fund focused primarily on liquid tokens and digital assets. A spokesperson confirmed with Blocksworks on Thursday. The capital plans to co- complement its other crypto investments in seed, venture, growth, and expansion funds. So they've been already investing buying uh, equity in companies, right? In crypto companies. Now they want to get the tokens. It is also one of the first sub funds to be launched as part of its new Sequoia Capital Fund, an open-ended liquid portfolio, the company said. The founders have asked the firm to take a more active role in managing its tokens through staking, providing liquidity, participating in governance and trading through portfolio companies' platforms. The fund will give it the ability to engage further, the company said. Here's a quote. Our goal is, with this fund is to participate more actively in protocols, better support token-only projects, and learn by doing ourselves. Sequoia Capital's Michelle Belhi, uh, Sean McGuire, and Alfred Lynn wrote on the Sequoia uh, blog. Guys, look at the money that's coming in. And remember, these people are not raising capital from different investors and high net worth and wealthy individuals to go lose that money. They have to give a return on the investment, an ROI here, right? Uh, this is investment 101. Just like you put money into tokens, you want to see a return. Look at the amount of money they're putting, uh, probably you know, 100 times more than we are, and they want a return. So these people are betting higher prices are coming. I hope you are too, and I hope you are being patient and you're watching all these things that are happening. This is this is important and can really show you the direction that we're, we're heading to. Now, let's talk about some SEC Ripple news. So Eleanor Tourette of Fox Business tweeted out today, Ripple's general counsel, Stuart Alarati, statement to Fox Business. Here's a quote. Once released, these documents will show that in 2012, Ripple received a legal analysis that XRP was not an investment contract. The fact that it took the SEC eight years to to suggest they disagreed with that uh, analysis while XRP traded in a massive global market is baffling. We look forward to the public having access to these documents as we continue to vigorously defend this case. So we got some big documents coming out, guys. Um, Let me give you some updates here. So first, uh, Chris Larson files a letter in which he states Ripple and Mr. Larson uh, do not oppose unsealing legal memos in their entirety. And um, Jeremy Hogan, attorney Jeremy Hogan tweeted, if it's coming out, let it all come out. Um, He says here, what happens next? The judge will do a quick order, order to the clerk to unseal the exhibits because it's after 7 p.m. court time. This will probably happen tomorrow. Uh, I don't think we'll see anything tonight. So tomorrow could be a very big day, my friends. And uh, the SEC is not looking very good. Gary Gensler is not looking very good. This is why I've said, I believe Ripple will win this lawsuit. And I believe it, the settlement or whatever it is, gonna resolution is going to happen this year. And uh, Ripple will have to pay a small fine, I think, for 2013 to 2015. But XRP will be declared not a security. And I will I expect to see a relisting on the exchanges. Now, I say this based on my research and, and, and what I've seen and heard and so forth. Um, but it, that's not a guarantee. So this is not financial investment advice, of course. Um, we don't know all the details, but the details we see so far, uh, the SEC does not have a strong case. Now, on that note... Gary Genser, here's a here's a article by the block released today. SEC Chair Genser pitches his crypto vision at exclusive House Democrat event. 
Hmm. The chairman of the SEC has was one of the guest speakers at the annual event for Democrats on a key congressional body in financial services, according to documents obtained by the bloc. Chairman Gary Genser focused his remarks on cryptocurrency, arguing before the Congress people in attendance that the SEC has existing legal authority over much of the market than currently acknowledged. So we know what his MO is. He wants more power. He wants to control the crypto asset class. He wants it under uh, the SEC. But obviously, uh, the these crypto assets and digital assets don't align with uh, the SEC's mission entirely. Though I believe some of it does, of course, some of it does, but some of it falls under the CFTC and, and other um, regulators. So Gary wants to control it. He wants to go around shaking down companies and you know, t- taking settlement money, lining his pockets. And uh, he, he, there's rumors that he wants the treasury job. So he's trying to be as hard nosed as possible. But at the same time, by doing this, he's stifling innovation. He's driving uh, a lot of crypto companies and businesses overseas where there's clarity, right? Um, so this is the, the situation that we have. And, you know, he's going before the Democrats and he's kissing their butts and, you know, probably trying to get uh, some brownie points so that he can keep his job and whatever. But uh, Democrats better watch out. It's the midterm elections this year, and, and it seems like they're going to get destroyed uh, because many of them are against crypto. Not all. I want to make sure that's clear. There's many great Democrats who support crypto and there's bipartisan support. But there are a lot who, like Elizabeth Warren and, and Brad Sherman and, and these clowns. Um, and, and we know Elizabeth Warren and Gary Genser are buddies. So we know what's been going on there. Now, something I want to share with you guys, and, I, and I've always encouraged you all to call, email, write, text, do whatever you need to do, make content. Your voices are being heard. And John Deaton obviously has CryptoLaw.us, right? Um, his respective website where you can you reach out and to members of, of Congress and, and voice your concerns. Well, this is cool. Shout out to JV um, who on Twitter. He uh, uh, submitted a letter and got a really great response from Senator Warnock. Um, let, let me give you some details. So first, Crypto Law, they tweeted out, the XRP army should be proud. An important breakthrough is getting a member of the Senate banking to pledge robust oversight over the SEC's enforcement practices on cryptocurrencies and any potential conflicts of interest. Wow. Um, that's pretty great. So John Deaton will fly to Georgia or D.C. to join XRP holders of Georgia in meeting with Senator Warnock and his staff uh, on what comes next. Wow, this is great, guys. So shout out to um, JV on Twitter. He, this is great. And here's what he tweeted. I believe Senator Warnock is one of, is on the right side. John Deaton uh, it says digital, the digital asset investor. Hashtag Georgia Crypto. Thank you, Senator Warnock. I re- responded to, to your letter and I urge you to look at the good actors within the crypto space. Example, Ripple and the digital asset XRP. So the fact that they're going to, he said this, right? We're going to look into this, make sure there's no conflicts of interest. This is great. Our voices are being heard. I think they, 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 they know about crypto Twitter now, especially what happened with the infrastructure bill situation, guys. So keep tweeting. Keep emailing, keep submitting your, your correspondences and letters and so forth, guys. Keep going. We got to put the pressure, get Genser out. Um, and and we're, we're moving in the right direction here. You know, it was at one point we didn't know what we were going to do, but a lot of the crypto community, especially the XRP army, came together and things have been moving in the right direction, guys. So keep it up, keep the pressure up. Um, you know, the government is supposed to represent the people. Our tax dollars pay their salaries and funds the government, right? Uh, so they need to be listening to us. Our representative needs to, they need to be listening to us. So this is awesome. This is great news. Guys, what do you think about this news? Uh, do you agree with me that something big is on the horizon here with crypto and worldwide government regulations? Um, this Ukrainian uh, parliament approval making crypto, legalizing crypto, given all what's happening right now with the Russia and Ukraine, makes me uh, very bullish that 
they're not so much worried about the invasion and they're doing stuff like this. And crypto is a huge agenda item because it's the, as the World Economic Forum called it, the fourth industrial revolution. Leave your thoughts and comments below, hit the thumbs up button, share this video, and I'll talk to you all later.